Yo, Elliot, my question is, when is it okay to divorce? I met my wife when we got married when I was still under blue pill conditioning. Becoming a father was a big red pill for me. And on my journey to become the strongest version of myself, my wife and I have begun arguing more. We seem to have developed differences in our vision of family. At the time, she didn't work and I felt she didn't do enough in the house. Now she works and does even less. Also, she always buys sweets or unhealthy snacks and she starts to share them with our daughter, which is crazy to me. We also have big differences in how much screen time we allow our own personal and family lives. Plus, I want more children, at least one son, but she's not willing to have more kids. How should I go about this? Do you think she might impede me from becoming the strongest version of myself or that I should keep focused on becoming stronger and actually mold her into being more aligned with my vision? So there's a lot to unpack here before I just jump into when it's okay to divorce. I like the fact that you recognize that you married while still under blue pill conditioning. And I would, I would hate to see that happen for any man, but usually that's about 99% of divorces. Do not marry if you do not have a red pill understanding. And the, the real red pill comes from the Bible. Everything that, you're gonna, that you learn in the red pill comes from the Bible. That's in fact how I reverted to Catholicism, came back to the church. It was learning about the red pill and then realizing, oh man, all this stuff is in the Bible and it really is. I'm gonna show my, shut my thing. And so I wouldn't wish for any man to get into a marriage without ha no, having known the implications thereof on a spiritual level. And the spiritual level, when I mean spirit, by spiritual level or soul level is intersexual dynamics, right? Female psychology, right? The Bible gives us all that. The Bible shows us, I mean, we're only up to uh, reading about Isaac and Rebecca. And Rebecca's awesome. Rebecca was beautiful. Rebecca was hospitable. Rebecca was a great choice as a wife for Isaac. But still, as was promised in the garden, she has a tendency to want to usurp his power. And she does a lot of conniving and, trick, and tricky things to, uh, to undermine his authority. And it seems like every woman does that. Sarah does it to a degree, even though she's another good, she's a really good wife in many different ways. It's sort of a part of this, it, I don't want to say instinctual because it's a part of the fallen nature. We, and so if you're not aware of that, and women aren't aware of it, they're not aware of their fallen nature. The world tells them, even, even in their sin, the world goes, oh, you go, girl. Women can do nothing wrong uh, under this uh, blue pill brainwash that most of us are under and the gynocentric world, right? Because the, the governments and the corporations understand that there's more power in um, serving women and giving women the rule of the roost than for men, right? And so for whatever, many, many, many different reasons, we all fall under this blue pill conditioning, gynocentrism, and to get married under that illusion will only lead to failure. And so any of your friends who are getting married, you, of course, you know, this is something that you, has already happened, you're already there. Um, and my assertion to every single man watching this is get, get red pilled very quickly before you get married. Do, because otherwise you're going into the marriage um, in ignorance, right? And, I, and that's what I did. It just so happened that it turned out well for me, right? But um, it doesn't work out well for most men. So right now you're struggling because you're under that blue pill conditioning, right? And what is some of that blue pill conditioning that leads one to get married and then the marriage start to have problems? Well, you're, you're dealing with some of it right now. Let's begin to look at some of the blue pill ideas that you may have harnessed that allowed you to get into the situation that you're in right now so that we can all sort of get, you know, gain something from this. You said um, at the time she didn't work, right? So you thought she needed to work, right? That's a blue pilled idea that your woman needs to contribute. The idea that a woman needs to contribute to the family through her work is a, is a blue pill or it's a feminist idea. She contributes to the family by taking care of the family. She contributes by taking care of the house. And so she didn't work. And she didn't even do enough in the house to begin with. That's a second one. So she didn't work and she didn't do anything in the house. Blue pill conditioning teaches men that it's okay for women not to hold up their end of the deal. 
it's okay for women not to have children and to care for the family and to take care of the house. This is what strong, independent woman, blue pill mindset has unfolded. Lazy women, entitled women, right? So she doesn't work and she doesn't help the house. If you're a red pilled man, you wouldn't stand for that because you realize that she's not just worth the twat between her legs. This is what a, this is what a beta male believes or a blue pill man believes. He believes that because he's getting sex that she's worth having around. That's not true. And, but a lot of times that's the that's the the veil that covers our eyes from seeing what these people, these women are really worth. What does she bring to the table? Why am I marrying you? You don't work and you don't help me around the house. You're nothing but a burden. A red pilled man, a biblical patriarch, right? That's a better way. I don't even want to use that word red pill anymore. I'm going to start using that word, a patriarch, a patriarch, a true biblical patriarch right, who understands red pill from its spiritual aspect and history given through the Bible, would never marry a, a lazy woman. You, essentially, what you've got is a lazy, entitled woman. You're asking me about divorce. I didn't go there yet, but I'm just painting the picture for what we got going on here, right? What we got here is a woman that doesn't want to work. She doesn't want to help around the house. Also, you say she's addicted to sugar and nasty snacks. She eats unhealthy snacks and she's feeding it to the daughter. So I don't know if she's obese yet. I don't know if she has diabetes yet. I don't know if she's got that big lump on the back of her neck yet and her jowl will start hanging. But that's what's, that's what's going to unfold when you have a lazy, entitled person because they treat their bodies in a lazy, entitled way. They eat bad food and then they raise their children to be as degenerate as they are, right? I know I sound real bad talking about you and your family, but I'm really just painting the picture that you've given me a blueprint for, right? I'm just painting by color. This is what you're showing me, right? So she eats sweets and she's destroying your daughter's teeth. <laughs> you have big differences on screen time, right? And so, you know, another thing that a non-patriarch does, right? A, an uninitiated man does, right? I'm gonna start using different terms. But an un uninitiated man in the ways of the patriarch, uh, sees it sees women as sees the choices that women make as it's their choice it's okay for them to do whatever they want to do which is fine and true but then ignore that and bring that woman into their house thinking that i can live with this folly you're living with a folly that you didn't you, you didn't you didn't see or you were you weren't willing to see because of your blue pill glasses when you have the blue pill glasses on, you can't see these things because the world tells you that even if she's fat, even if she's lazy, even if she's entitled, even if she's addicted to screens, she's addicted to sugar and she doesn't know how to help around the house. All these things the feminist world tells us are excusable for women. How dare you tell me that I need to do these things like help around the house? How dare you tell me what to eat and fat shame me? It's diabolical, it's destructive, it's degenerate. And we've allowed it because why? Free sex. That's the other thing. Men, ha men, I've said this already, but I'm gonna say it again, that we don't see these things because we're too busy blowing our loads in these ladies. When you're busy blowing your load in these ladies, you start to see them with sex glasses on. And then those sex glasses are, are right on top of those gynocentric glasses and it's over, it's over for you. If you got on gynocentric glasses and sex glasses, it's over. You cannot see reality for what it is. Read your Bible and stop fornicating. <laughs> That's my advice to all the guys. But we'll get to you and what you gotta do right now. Uh, he says, you wanna have, he says he wants to have more children and she's not willing to have more kids, all right? That's another thing that feminists have convinced men that they shouldn't ask about. What do you mean you ain't going, you're only going to marry me for making babies, right? This, this, this is the trope. This is a lie. This is what they use to sort of provoke you. Oh, I'm just a baby making machine. Well, if listen, here's the thing. You're allowed to have your own opinion about that. And so am I. So I don't have to marry you if you don't want to have the amount of children I want. I want lots of kids. I knew I wanted lots of kids. My wife wanted lots of kids. So it works out well. But I can't, I'm not going to marry her knowing she only wants one kids and I want four because she's entitled to her opinion. Well, I'm entitled to who I marry. Right? And you see all these women talking about don't settle. Men are the ones that are settling. Men are the ones that are settling. This is how it happened. 
It happened because men began settling. And why did men begin settling? This, 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 this whole lie about women settling for men and not settling for men is ass backwards. It's men that have been settling for women, but why? Because of the sexual revolution. We settle as long as we get sex. Women don't, they, it's a little, it's, a, it's very different for them, right? They're looking for a whole lot more. They are a little bit clearer on what their expectations are because they're not as blinded by sex as we are. They can be, they do. I mean, once you lay it down, that's it. But for men, the glasses, the glasses are thick. How should I go about this? Do you think she might impede me from becoming the strongest version of myself or that I should keep focus on being stronger and actually mold her into being aligned with my vision? So that's your, you asked two questions. The first one is what is it okay to divorce? I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna skip that one for a moment. Because then you go on to say, how should I go about this? Do you think she might impede me from becoming the strongest version of myself? That is a great question. In fact, that is the, that's the foundation question that I want to approach and deal with in this. The answer is no. There is absolutely nothing she can do to stop you from becoming the strongest version of yourself, except if you let her. These challenges, even in family, right? These challenges, all our challenges in life are designed to, re to produce resistance so that we may overcome. The only way you get stronger is by overcoming resistance. If there's no resistance in your life, there's no strength. A woman in many ways will offer resistance to a man or God will allow a woman to offer resistance to a man so the man may be, grow stronger in virtue. And one of the virtues that you may need to be able, you may need to grow in is detachment, right? Humility, right? repentance, repent for my mistake, right? Repent for all the ways that you got to where you are right now, right? Repent for the fornication that you were having with her, right? Repent for not reading the Bible and taking heed of, of red pill ideals because they were offered to you, right? Everybody knows the Bible exists, right? Just start with Adam and Eve and you can't help but be red pilled. But I get it. The gynocentric world has told you. This is part of the reason why feminists hate the Bible. This is why communists hate the Bible. They hate the Bible because if you truly understand the truth that's revealed in the Bible, feminism and communism will not work, right? They're against the Bible. So what they do is they unfold a narrative about how the Bible is racist, the Bible is sexist, the Bible is bad, it's archaic, all these various things. No surviving culture, healthy surviving culture on this planet doesn't have a Bible doesn't have its origin story, doesn't have its commandments, doesn't have its rules for life, except Westerners, because we killed God and made government our Lord and Savior. Well, this is, this is how we end up losing ourselves. So anyway, repenting for your sins, recognizing your faults, turning around and trying to make things best is what I hear in this last question. Should I focus on becoming stronger and actually mold her into becoming aligned with my vision? That would be the toughest, but the most noble course of action. Having the tough conversations with her. I mean, I'm, I'm, I wonder if you've even come to her with a lot of these questions that you're asking me, right? Like, does she know that she is not a contributor? Right? Have you spoken to her and, and, and voiced you? Because a woman will do this. You know, when women fall out of love, it's very different than, than what you're dealing with right now. But what a woman would, you know, they say 90% of divorces are initiated by women because a woman in your situation wouldn't even ask, be willing to ask. She would just go. She would just go. She would just leave. That's why divorce, I'm against divorce, particularly as how it's used as a weapon against men today. Because that's really what it is. Divorce is, is a weapon against men. And it gives women a pass to be promiscuous and lazy and ineffective as wives, right? There's, there's so much wrong with the foundation and, and the path that gets us to this mess that we usually find ourselves in. It's multi-layered. So when you ask me, when is it okay to divorce? I have to start at the beginning. When is it okay to fornicate? When is it okay to marry a woman that is of low value? When is it okay to marry a woman and make babies with a woman that's lazy, 
doesn't have a job, doesn't clean the house and feeds the kids bad food. You see what I'm saying? We had to start way earlier and it began and it begins always with fornication. You're asking me about divorce like I like you need my moral uh, opinion about breaking up a marriage where I don't even want to touch that because the problem started way before that. Why are you fucking that girl? Why were you doing that? And why, you know, but anyway, I, I'm not asking that question. I know why, you know, I live in the same world as you. I get it. I, I could have made the same mistake, but by the grace of God, there go I. I don't, I'm not a perfect man. I could see myself doing the same thing you did when I was your age, right? So I don't, I'm not speaking in a blaming way, but I am frustrated with the way the world has tricked us. Focusing on yourself and molding her into an alignment with your vision would be the greatest achievement of your life. Saving your family essentially is what you're saying. So I know you're not asking me how to go about that, but there are a few things that I would suggest you do to prepare the ground for that. The first thing I would ask you to do to prepare the ground for that is to have a conversation with her. You say, I do talk to her and sometimes it works, but it's a constant struggle. Having the tough conversations, that's good. I'm happy that you're having the tough conversation. You answer your own question when you say, do I focus on becoming stronger? What I would offer you to do as a means for getting stronger, is it's not so much about, you know, Ego gratification, building myself up, getting better looking, making yourself marketable uh, in the sexual marketplace, although it is. But it really is about regaining the respect due to you in your home. And there are certain ways to go about that, right? These are ways of being that would have contributed to you either not marrying a bad woman like this or to have averted these problems before they came, they came about. But you can backtrack and start to, first of all, protect yourself and then not build yourself up, like I said, for ego gratification, but build yourself up in a way that could inspire change in her. Will it work? I don't know. But there's a method, there's a, there's a, there's a plan you can follow. And I would suggest you read the book called um, Saving a Low Sex Marriage by the Blue Pill Professor. I've, I've suggested that book many times. I like that book a lot, not because it's about low sex. Maybe you're not having low sex in your marriage, but low sex in a marriage, just like a woman who's lazy and eats candy and, and doesn't want to have children, is not a matter of sex or work. It's a matter of respect. And she doesn't respect you. She doesn't respect your opinion. She doesn't respect your vision. She doesn't, she's not aligned with you. The book gives various tactics that you could use. Be very careful with it. Um, that, a lot, that begins to reignite or repolarize the relationship. And a, and a, and a polarized relationship is one of respect and love. A depolarized relationship is one where, you know, is like a feminist relationship, right? Where you got to respect her, you know, respect women, respect women, they say, right? You got to respect her and she don't have to respect you, right? She just needs to give you, give you sex. That's really basically the feminist version of marriage. And they, they don't even want to give sex. Most feminists, they're just saying, wow, that's even that's oppressive. <laughs> Crazy, right? Respect women, respect your husband. Really? That's what the new calling call should be, right? Respect women hasn't gotten us anywhere. We've been doing that for 60 years. All it's gotten is more divorce and more abortions. Respect women. They're making bad mistakes. Respect men. There would be less divorce, right? Because who's, who's initiating divorce? Women. There'd be less abortion. Why? Because men don't want to kill their babies, right? Um, there would be better families. Things would be so much so much better off. But you can't just demand respect. Respect is earned. You, you can't even expect respect because you're a man. There's a time, there was a time when that was the case, but I understand, and I'm not saying that just because you're a man, you should be respected, but the tendency is there or the, the biology is set up such that she wants to respect you. 
She just hasn't found a way to. So your job in molding her into being aligned with your vision is real. And, and, and it's not about a hard handed respect. It's about a admirable respect. She needs to come to admire you again. She doesn't admire you. She doesn't look up to you. Remember I said this before, that a woman needs to look up to her man, right? I know that sounds weird, right? But these are, these are red pill or, or biblical patriarchy truths. A woman wants to, she doesn't want to look down on her man. Because if she looks down on her man, she's going to be, first of all, she's going to usurp his power. She doesn't want to have that power. And if she has that power, she's going to destroy you, her, and your family, as she's doing right now. I'll offer you one more book too, right? Since I'm, you know, I'm speaking from the Christian perspective. The Biblical Masculinity Blueprint. I actually have it right here. The Biblical Masculinity Blueprint. A Christian Man's Guide to Attraction, Relationship, and Marriage in a Messed Up World. Right? So it's for single men, but it's also um, for married men. It's a pretty good book. He talks about it. How have men responded to feminism in the changing culture? Not very good. Right? Know your boundaries in a relationship. Transform your godliness into brotherly kindness and love. Right? Know how to show assertive communication. Show you can love effectively. Just reading some of the headlines in here. Standard marriage questions. Oh, this is pretty good. <laughs> I'm kind of ranting on this, but might even use this somehow. These are questions to ask a woman before you marry her, right? Will she take your last name, right? Will she take your last name? After you have children, what are your priorities? What happens if we have mismatched libidos? What are your expectations as to the frequency of sex in a marriage? What does submission mean to you? What are your expectations of a husband in spiritual leadership? What are your expectations of a husband in household leadership? What are your expectations of teaching children spiritually and mentally? How do you plan to teach your children? How do you feel about adoption? What do you do if you're diagnosed, uh, if you disagree with a decision I made and I made that decision anyway? What would you do if I made a decision and you disagreed and it turned out I was wrong? What are acceptable reasons for divorce? You want to ask her that. Do you believe in soulmates? How do you feel about feminism? What do you think about the sexual double standard where men are studs and women are sluts? What do you think about a marriage in the church with witnesses and a signed covenant, but not a marriage license from the state? I forgot how good this book is. Good thing I had it sitting right here. I would invite everybody to kind of to, to get that book and read through that book. I might write one like that someday soon. Now, what do I think about divorce? Well, you say, when is it okay to divorce? Well, according to the Bible, when she cheats on you. That's, that's basically the only good reason given in the Bible to divorce a woman, right? And I think that's an Old Testament standard, right? If she, if just in the case of adultery, right? In the case of adultery, it's like stealing. Adultery is stealing, right? And stealing in many ways is punishable by death, you know, depending. And there's, and, 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 you know, depending on how much you steal, just think about it this way. If we use stealing as a, as a metaphor for what's going on, because it is, and I'll tell you why in a moment, you know, if you steal the most, most valuable diamond, right. Or the most valuable jewel from a, a museum, or you steal a billion dollars, you're going to jail for a very long time. You may even be put to death. You can't steal valuable stuff. Well, in the marriage covenant, the most valuable thing is what your wife can give you, and that's her body. And it goes vice versa. The most valuable thing you can give to your wife in marriage is your body. In other words, you now own each other. I know that in our individualistic world, it's all about me and my ego and my wants, my feelings, me, 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 me. That's part of the reason why marriage doesn't work. But Christian marriage, the covenant is designed such that I no longer own myself. My wife does. If I go and have sex with another woman, that basically is me stealing what belongs to my wife. My wife gets my bone. If I start giving it to somebody else, I'm giving something that I owe, I owe to her. And same thing with your wife. If your wife is out there, she's adultery, she's, she's giving away what is due to you. 
you're not having sex with me at home, but you're out there having sex with somebody else. That for me, I think is good is grounds for divorce. And it's in the Bible. But then Jesus comes and says, well, the only reason why that was okay in the old days is because y'all were stiff necked people and you didn't recognize the spiritual reality of things that when God joins two people together, they're never separated apart. So in other words, the minute you are married, you're always married. This is Jesus's assertion. He's saying what God has joined together, no man shall separate. So you could pretend like you're divorced. These are all these people who are divorced and remarried and stuff. They're, they're living a lie and it's going to catch up on them or usually does catch up on them, but they're also going to have to answer for it on their judgment day. Right. It's you. You are living against the natural law. So it's never OK to divorce, but. Leeway is given for adultery, which I totally understand. I'm with that. But like I said, even even Jesus says that that's you know, you want to you want to find your way to work, work your way around that now. Could I stay with a woman that after she uh, gave stole my sex, right? Gave away, gave away my sex to somebody else. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be very happy about that at all. And I can't say that I would stay with her, but if she's being lazy and she's eating too much sugar and she's um, spending too much time on her phone, I don't think that's grounds for divorce. She didn't, she's not really stealing anything from you. In fact, it's kind of your fault. And we already did that. I beat you up a bunch already, right? It's kind of your fault, right? Stop having sex with these terrible women and then marry them. But um, I don't think anything that you have going on is grounds for divorce. I would hate to see you destroy your family as a result of the fact that you know she's lazy and uh, eating sugar. I think you can, like I said, I sound like a broken record right now, but I think you got to repent for your mistakes. It got you into the places you are, but I think you can make reparations for them by doing exactly what we said right here, what you suggest by taking care of yourself, doing the best that you can, do the best that you can, pray, bro, pray. Pray for her, for her to change, right? Uh, and do the best that you can to reestablish polarity and respect in the marriage. And I think things will, may not be easy, but I think they'll work out well for you, dude. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students, where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word king, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.